Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be presenting a concise note-like explanation for the tibia which would be useful for the exams. For the detailed explanation of the tibia along with the bone specimen, please refer to the link to my video in the description below. For newcomers, I kindly request you to watch that video first and then look up to this for the concise notes. So let's look at the introduction, site determination, features and attachments of the tibia. Beginning with the introduction, the tibia is the medial and larger bone of the leg. It is homologous with the radius of the upper limb. Now for the site determination, we have to mention three points. The upper end is larger than the lower end. The medial side of the lower end projects downwards as a medial malleolus. The anterior border of the shaft is crest-like. Now let's move on to the features of the tibia. It has an upper end, a shaft and a lower end. The upper end consists of the medial condyle, the lateral condyle, the intercondylar area and the tibial tuberosity. Now let's look at the medial condyle in detail. We have five points. Firstly, the medial condyle is larger than the lateral condyle. Its superior surface articulates with the medial condyle of the femur. Its articular surface is oval. And the central part of the articular surface is slightly concave. The peripheral part is flat and separated from the femoral condyle by the medial meniscus. Its posterior surface presents a groove. Its anterior and medial surfaces are marked by numerous vascular foramina. Moving on to the lateral condyle, it also has five points. The lateral condyle overhangs the shaft more than the medial condyle. Its superior surface articulates with the lateral condyle of the femur. Its articular surface is nearly circular. The central part of the articular surface is slightly concave and has direct contact with the femur. Its peripheral part is flat and separated from the femur by the lateral meniscus. The posterior aspect of the lateral condyle articulates with the fibula. The fibula facet is flat, circular, directed downwards, backwards and laterally, while the anterior aspect presents a flattened impression called the Gerdes tubercle. Now moving on to the intercondylar area. It is a roughened area on the superior surface between the two condyles. It is narrowest in its middle part. The middle part is elevated to form the intercondylar eminence and is flanked by the medial and lateral intercondylar tubercles. On to the tuberosity of the tibia, it is a prominence located on the anterior aspect of the upper end of the tibia. Inferiorly, it is continuous with the anterior border of the shaft. It is divided into an upper smooth area and a lower rough area. The epiphyseal line for the upper end passes through the junction of these two parts. Now let's look at the shaft. It is prismoid in shape. It has three borders, the anterior, medial and the interosseous or the lateral borders. It has three surfaces, the lateral, medial and the posterior surface. Now looking at the borders in detail, the anterior border is sharp and S-shaped. It is convex medially in the upper part. It is convex laterally in the lower part. It extends from the tibial tuberosity to the anterior border of the medial malleolus below. It is subcutaneous and forms the shin. The medial border is rounded. It extends from the medial condyle above to the posterior border of the medial malleolus below. The interosseous or the lateral border extends from the lateral condyle to the anterior border of the fibular notch. Now looking at the surfaces in detail, the lateral surface lies between the anterior and the interosseous borders. Its upper three-fourths is concave, directed laterally. Its lower one-fourths is directed forwards. The medial surface lies between the anterior and the medial borders. It is broad and subcutaneous. The posterior surface 
lies between the medial and the interosseous borders. Its upper part is the widest. It is crossed obliquely by a rough ridge called the solian line. Now looking at the solian line, it begins just behind the fibula facet. It runs downwards and medially. It terminates by joining the medial border at the junction of the upper and middle thirds. Now, above the solian line, the posterior surface is in the form of a triangular area. Below the solian line, it is elongated. It is divided into a medial and lateral part by a vertical ridge. Now, moving on to the lower end of the tibia, it is slightly expanded and has five surfaces. The anterior larger surface has an upper smooth part and a lower rough and grooved part. Its medial surface is subcutaneous and continuous with the medial surface of the medial malleolus. The lateral surface has a triangular fibula notch. Its upper part is rough, lower part is smooth and covered with hyaline cartilage. The inferior surface articulates with the superior trochlear surface of the talus and forms the ankle joint. The posterior surface is smaller than the anterior surface. The medial malleolus is short but is a strong process. It projects downwards from the medial surface of the lower end of the tibia. It forms a subcutaneous prominence on the medial side of the ankle. Now let's look at the attachments on the tibia. Before I start with it, please note that the red color represents the origin of muscles. The green color represents the attachment of ligaments and joint capsules, while the blue color represents the insertion of muscles. Starting with the attachments on the medial condyle, we have the mnemonic as MSC. M stands for the attachment of the medial patellar tenaculum, which is attached on the anterior surface. S stands for the insertion of the semimembranosus muscle, which is inserted into the groove on the posterior surface. C stands for the attachment of the capsular ligament of the knee joint. Now moving on to the attachments on the lateral condyle, the mnemonic here is PIC. P stands for the attachment of the popliteus tendon. I stands for the attachment of the iliotibial tract to the flattened impression on the anterior surface. C stands for the attachment of the capsular ligament of the superior tibiofibular joint around the margins of the fibula facet. Moving on to the attachments on the intercondylar area, the first three will be the structures related to the anterior aspect of the intercondylar area, that is the AHMM, ACL and AHLM. Now the AHMM is the anterior horn of the medial meniscus, which is attached in just in front of the medial articular surface. Now the next is the anterior cruciate ligament. It is attached on a smooth area just behind the previous attachment. The third is the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. It is attached to the front of the intercondylar eminence and lateral to the anterior cruciate ligament. Now the structures attached posteriorly are the PHLM, the PHMM and the PCL. The PHLM stands for the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. It is attached to the posterior slope of the intercondylar eminence. The PHMM stands for the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. It is attached to the depression behind the base of the medial intercondylar tubercle. Finally, the PCL, that is the posterior cruciate ligament, is attached to the posterior most smooth area. Now, moving on to the attachments on the tibial tuberosity, the ligament in petalae is attached to the upper smooth part of the tuberosity. Looking at the attachments on the shaft, the lateral surface gives origin to the tibialis anterior from the upper two thirds of the lateral surface. The medial surface gives insertion to the semitendinosus, the gracilis, and the semimembranosus, 
from the upper part of the medial surface. The posterior surface gives insertion to the popliteus, origin to the flexor digitorum longus and the tibialis posterior. The anterior border gives attachment to the deep fascia of the leg, the superior extensor retinaculum, while the fibula notch gives attachment to the interosseous tibiofibula ligament. The solial line gives origin to the soleus muscle. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want me to prepare such videos for other bones as well, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.